What's up, fight fans, and welcome back to the KJ MMA Show. I'm Ryan Drell, joined by Garrett Kermit. As always, we got another banger of a card this Saturday, UFC Fight Night. Blahovich versus Rakic really is a, a fantastic card, top to bottom. Garrett, how are you liking this one? It's actually pretty good, you know, for a fight night, especially coming after a such a big, you know, UFC pay-per-view. This is actually a pretty well put together card, a lot of action packed fights. Uh, I feel like there's going to be a lot of finishes on it. So I'm really looking forward to it. Let's just start right with the main event. Alexander Rakic is 14 and two. He's about a minus 200 favorite over Jan Blahovich, the former champion who's 28 and nine. That seems a little odd to me. I mean, I know Rakic is, is the man. He's a great fighter. He's very well rounded. He's got a lot of power, but the former champion Blahovich to be, the underdog here. Does that line seem right to you? Yeah, it does. I think Rakish actually should be a little bit higher of a favorite. I'm I'm a lot higher on Rakish than name Blahovich at this point in their respective careers. We talk about Rakish that technically should be on a 15 fight winning streak. He won that fight against uh, Volkan uh, Ustamir. Uh, you know this guy's been looking great. He's very well rounded. He he's up to his wrestling game as you saw. You know in the Anthony Smith fight, he's his striking is a lot better than Blahovich as well. He's able to keep the distance. He's much more technical on the feet. Uh, and Blahovich is, I feel like he's just, he's shop worn. We, we saw it in the Glover fight. Maybe he, he'll look different, but I'm not sure because he had a, a very serious injury that took him off uh, their, their fight. They were, they were supposed to fight uh, a couple of months ago where he had a neck injury. And then one half of his body, I think was numb at, at, at one point. So um, you know, there's a lot of things coming into this fight, and I can see why the line's still creeping up to where I think it should be. I was able to get Rakic around minus 160 on Monday, so I'm very happy with that line. It's getting a little, a little up there. Probably would be lower in my units on him at around minus 200, but I expect him to close around minus 225, minus 230, where it should settle. I think he gets it done here. I mean. You know, he's a younger fighter. He's a fresher fighter. He's a hungrier fighter. He's, you know, like I said, he should be on a 15 fight winning streak and being his only loss is, is his professional uh, debut. And he's, he's looked really good. And I, I feel he gets the job done here and he puts himself in title contention. Wow. Okay. Well, geez, let's just say hypothetically speaking that the, the line is right. And Rakic is the favorite for a reason. Don't you feel like this is a situation where Blahovich this could be like a good play for a dog. I mean, he's got a lot of power. All it takes is mm -hmm. one slip up from mm -hmm. Alexander Rakic and Blahovich could put him out. See, I don't like the narrative that with the Polish power and this and that, this man's not a power puncher. He is not because look at the guys he's knocked out. Corey Anderson and Luke Rockhold are two of the three guys he's knocked out in the last eight years. We're talking about a guy that has three knockouts and 16 fights over the last seven and a half years. That overblown Polish power nonsense, I don't like it. I don't see where this this uh, thing is that he's, you know, he's got some one-punch knockout power. I don't see it. I don't believe it. I mean, he went against Glover Teixeira. That power is nowhere to be found. He got overly, he got overwhelmed. Um, there's other fights where he's gone to decisions. I mean, he went against Patrick Cummins, who's known to get knocked out. He lost a, a majority decision to him. I mean, there's so many people. I mean, uh, Jock Ray Souza, he went 25 minutes holding him against the cage. I mean, it's just things like that. The Polish power, you know, monocle that all of that is just completely overblown from the guys that he's beaten, like a chinny Luke Rockhold or a Corey Anderson that gets hit a shit ton that we've seen in his career. So I don't like that that narrative, and I don't think that punching power is going to be enough to beat Rakic. Okay, well, I will say this: Blahovich did put out Dominic Reyes. I don't know what you feel about Reyes, but that's a guy. But that, that's uh, that's not aging like fine wine. Let's put it that way, right now. Okay, well, hey, I I'm I'm not quick to no. run Blahovich off. G granted, I the, Rakic is legit, and he's the younger fighter. And you might be right uh, about the the injury injuries plural that Blahovich has been dealing with. So this could be a situation where it could be the coming out party for Rakic. Do you feel like this guy is is a future champion? I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting because the light heavyweight division is it's very up up for grabs because I don't feel like anybody's unbeatable. You know what I mean? It's not like John Jones is in the division anymore. I feel like that 
that belt's going to change hands multiple times. I feel like Yuri could win the belt against Glover and I also could see Yuri losing that belt to literally anybody in the division. I mean, there's so there there's so many different fighters that could really come up and win win the belt uh whether it's, you know, Alexander Rakic or um uh, Magomed Ankalaev, you know, someone like that, or you know, even maybe Jamal Hill in in a few uh, in a year or two. You know, there's so many different fighters in that division that could win the belt. It's it's up for grabs. It's it's a very wide open division. And would I be surprised if Rakic goes in there, beats Blahovich, and then goes on and beats Yuri or Glover? Absolutely not. Okay. Well, that's your main event for this weekend's fight night card. A really nice main event there. The co-main is Ryan Spann and Ian Kutalaba. Kutalaba is a minus 235 favorite Spann. Ryan Superman Spann plus 190. What's the play on this one? I know Kutalaba, this is a guy that always starts fast. He comes out like a bat out of hell. But this is a guy that we've seen in, in previous fights he does fade if he doesn't get his opponent out of there early. Is this a case where Kutalaba is just going to overwhelm Ryan Spann and finish him? Or do you think Spann can weather that storm and get a finish late? I don't remember when Spann ever weathered the early storm and gets a finish late. That's, you know, this is a guy that takes a lot of damage. He gets hit a ton uh and he just he doesn't take damage very well and that does a bow well against yeah, kutalaba i mean at all and i expect violence right from the get-go um it's gonna be interesting to see if this gets out of round one but i don't see it getting out of round one whoever wins it should be in round one um i know span is long he's lanky he's got some good jiu-jitsu but kutalaba is coming and he's coming fast he's coming hard it's a small octagon so we're gonna get violence early often in that round one i like the fight to end in to end in round one at plus 105 i like kutalaba to win in round one at plus 130 i like kutalaba to win by knockout minus 130 minus 135 just in case it does get over you know it gets out of the first round and under one and a half rounds at minus 141 minus 140 uh is not a bad play either i just feel someone's getting finished someone's getting finished early and I, if I'm putting money on it, it's going to be Span getting finished. Okay. Let's move to bantamweight. Davey Grant, minus 300 favorite. That's a massive favorite here against Lewis Smolka. Smolka's plus 235. This is interesting to me. You know, I, I, I think both of these guys are – are fairly well-rounded. I, I know Davey Grant is a little bit newer to the, to the UFC, and Smoke has been around for a hot minute. This is a guy that made his UFC debut back in November of 2018. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. Do you feel like this is the right line, or do you feel like this one should be a little bit closer? Definitely should be closer. I mean, you're giving Davey Grant a, what a winning percentage of 70% of winning this fight. He's going to win seven out of 10 times against Smolka. I, I just don't see that. I mean, could he win? Yeah, but you're going to bet Davey Grant at minus 300. Since when has he ever looked like a minus 300 against any living corpse out there? There's just no way that you should ever bet Davey Grant at minus 300 against anybody. I really don't care who it is. You do not bet Davey Grant at minus 300. Do I think there's value on Smolka? Yeah, I do think it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot closer than the line suggests. I expect someone to get finished in this fight as well. Uh, both these guys are finishers through and through, uh, so it'd be interesting to see who gets their hand raised. But I just can't come to fathom, you know, betting Grant at minus three hundred. You're essentially thinking that Grant is a lock, and I don't think Davy Grant is a lock against Lewis Smolka. Okay, well, fair enough. I, I will say this. Davy Grant, in my opinion, has fought the, the tougher fighters. His most two fights uh, in particular is what I'm talking about. He went the distance with uh, Marlon Vera and Adrian Yanez. Both of those guys are absolute studs. So the fact that he went the distance with both of them, I think that's uh, an encouraging sign if you're in Davy Grant's camp. But again, uh, I, I'm with you on this. I feel like this should be a heck of a lot closer than, than what it is. Uh, I want to move down the card a, a little bit, Garrett, right now and talk about a guy that is making his official UFC debut. We saw him on Contender Series, and he looked great finishing Mitch Raposo, a guy that was on tough. He's a New England guy, and I thoroughly expected him to be in the UFC, but 
he's not. He's still fighting regionally now. And, of course, I'm talking about Jake Hadley. He's fighting Alan Nascimento. Nascimento is plus 180 dog, and Hadley's a minus 220 favorite. Is this the case where you feel like Hadley's going to build off of that momentum and, and look even more impressive here in his UFC debut than he did in Contender Series? I think this is going to be a letdown fight for Hadley. I really do. Uh, I don't like the line at minus 220. I'm I'm kind of waiting to play Nascimento at plus 200. Uh, I think Nascimento is the the better striker on the feet. And then when it gets to the mat, I'm it's I don't think Hadley really wants to take it to the mat because Nascimento is a jiu-jitsu black belt. He's extremely dangerous on the mat. We're talking Oliveira type dangerous on the mat because he trains with him. I mean, he trains with Oliveira daily. Uh, his striking is emulates him as well. That Thai boxing, uh, high guard, uses a lot of kicks. Uh, and mind you, this guy has double, almost triple the amount of fights that Hadley has against much, much better competition. And if you look at, you know, Hadley against uh, Paiva, you know, on the Contender Series Brazil, he outstruck Paiva on the feet. Paiva is also a much, much better striker than Hadley. And if you look at Hadley taking on someone like Luke Shanks, for for example, he he got reversed and he got taken down by not, uh, by by Shanks in that fight on numerous occasions. If he gets swept, if he is laxadaisy on the mat, he could get caught in an armbar. He can get reversed and swept and and get caught in something in the scrambles. It's going to be a sweat of a fight between uh, these two. I don't think the line is right. I think it should be a lot closer. I think Nascimento, um, because he got, you know, he got held uh, on the mat for a good majority of the fight against Ulan Bekov. I just don't think, uh, I don't, I don't think Hadley has that type of top pressure and that top control that, that Ulan Bekov has. I mean, their grappling is completely different. You got the Dagestani wrestler, that's able to control position and, you know, it's always pos- position over submission where Hadley is submission over position. So I expect him to go for submissions, but lose control and get swept on multiple occasions. And they're going to get caught in scrambles and we'll see, you know, we'll see, we'll see who comes out on top. I just don't think he's going to look like a minus 220 favorite. Okay. Well, I, I am excited to see Jake Hadley back in action. I was impressed to see what he did to, to Mitch Raposo at Contender Series. So I'm excited to see what he's going to do here in his official UFC debut. I want to move to the lightweight division. We have Michael Johnson and Alan Patrick in the showdown right here. And this is my question for you. So Michael the Menace Johnson has been around forever. His record is 19 wins. 17 losses and granted he's been fighting you know elite fighters for quite a while now but he has lost four in a row you know clay guida tiago moises stevie ray josh emmett most recently is he going to get back on the winning track and if he doesn't is is this going to be his last fight in the ufc i think it should be the last fight for both of them in the ufc i mean it's 2022 this is another 2022 fight all right, like, why are we seeing Michael Johnson take on Alain Patrick in 2022? I mean, this is this is absurd, you know. But here we are. Uh, I just don't see how he should lose this fight. He shouldn't lose this fight. Patrick has looked absolutely terrible. I don't think he's had a win since like what 2018, 2019. It's been like a minute since he's won a fight. Um, he was getting brut- brutally beaten in his last fight uh, against. Um, I have a guy's name, the the Welsh uh, fighter over there. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, like, this should be Michael Johnson all day, but am I going to run to the bank and, and put my money on Michael Johnson in 2022 at minus 150? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'd rather just uh, watch this fight from, from a fan's perspective and, and, see, and see who comes out victorious. Okay, so it, let's get the name right here. So I said Alan Patrick. You said Alan Patrick. If, if it's Alan Patrick, I absolutely butchered it. Are you sure about that? I believe it's Alan Patrick. I could I could be I could be wrong, but I'm I'm almost certain it's Alan Patrick. Okay. I definitely said it the American way. Alan Patrick or Alan <laughs> Patrick. However you want to look at it. We, we have Michael Johnson and Mr. Patrick Patrick back in action at 155. Now, this fight, I, I don't know if this is the, the curtain jerker, the, the first fight of the night, but when I look on topology, it sure seems that way. And for my money, 
This is one of the most intriguing fights on the card. And I'm talking about Nick Maximoff and Andre Petrosky. Maximoff is a huge favorite, minus 380 favorite. He's undefeated, obviously training with the Diaz brothers at the NDA Academy. He's 8-0. Petrosky, 7-1, a plus 290 dog. I, I think I know where you're going with this, Garrett. We've talked about this before. Do you feel like this is just the fight where Maximoff is going to do his thing, dominate, and win? Absolutely. There's just I what Petrovsky can maybe land a punch and get him out of there. It's possible he's got some power. But other than that, you know, Petrovsky do, is does the same thing that you know Maximov does well, and that's grapple. And that's gonna bode well, very, very well, because guess what? Uh Maximov just beat multiple grapplers in his last like in, I believe in his last two fights, he fought two wrestlers and beat them both. And I don't think Petrovsky is the same uh you know athlete as those two. I really don't. And and also, he doesn't have the cardio as those two either. So you're talking about a guy that will says the fight goes on. He, he cardio dumps within like five minutes. And then Petrovsky is beating literally no one in his, his entire career. He's beaten a bunch of cans. I'm just being honest. Michael Gilmore, uh, Zhang Zhu, who or whatever. Terrible fighters. No one's good. We we're talking about Maximov went all the way up to heavyweight. He went all the way up to heavyweight to get a contender fight because no one would want to fight him. And he won, dominated against a guy that was literally three times the size. That was 265. I think he was only like 220. <laughs> and he came in and dominated. And I just don't think, you know, Petrovsky is really going to do much. He's going to get caught in scrambles. He's going to get taken down. He's going, get, he's going to get controlled and I expect Maximov to get him out of there for, you know, maybe a second round submission. And I think the submission prop is pretty crazy, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm looking at it right now, give me a second. It's just I, well, while you're looking, I, I will say this. P- Petrovsky is a, a very, very good wrestler, and he's in great physical shape. The heavyweight that Maximov beat a contender series was not just say he, it was not was, he wasn't the epitome of, of what the, the perfect male physique should look like. You know what right. I mean? So but, so let's let's take that into consideration. I, right. I think Maximov's gas tank is going to be a little bit better than the heavyweight that, that Nick fought on. Right. On but does he have better cardio than, say, Punahali Soriano or or Cody Grundage? I don't think so. And, he, mm-hmm. and, he's, yeah. and he, is he so much better in his wrestling than those two collegiate athletes in Soriano and Brundage? I don't think so either. Okay. Well, what you know did you mean? find there on the prop bet? Uh, plus 350 by submission, which is absurd. It's an absurd amount because I know he wins by submit. He won by decision in his last two fights. But you're talking about a guy that majority of his wins are by, you know, are by submission. You know, uh, three. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's got two knockouts as well. You know, I'm sh- ground and pound. But his bread and butter is take you down and 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 submit you. And I, I feel like he could do that. You're, we're talking about Petrovsky got submitted by Brian Battle after gassing out after round one. It's something that I can definitely see happening again. The dude has a ton of muscle, um, and he's going to use all of that muscle immediately in round one. So once that you know lactic acid comes building up in his muscles, I feel like it's gonna it's gonna be a, a dis you know, a a disadvantage for him. Whereas Maximov doesn't have all that muscle. He just has technique. Well, you know, I'm a big Diaz brothers fan. I've interviewed Nick a couple of times, so I definitely love seeing the Diaz brothers around any fight card, whether it's a fight night, a pay-per-view more Diaz brothers, the better. I'm I'm sure you saw what Nick, Nate Diaz did uh, previously, I think earlier today uh, where he was taking He's taking a little bit of a bathroom break outside of the UFC PI. <laughs> you see I that? I did not see that. Oh yeah, he I was taking not. he was taking a little bit of a tinkle outside of the UFC PI, and then went on a tangent about how they will not release him and yada yada yada. So yeah, that was a uh, was quite interesting by an ATS. <laughs> wow. Well, he he wants his money, you know, and and this is yeah. a guy that that is a a pay per view seller, so you know the UFC is going to be making money when Nate Diaz fights, so. 
I can see where he's coming from. But anyways, this is a great fight. I am looking forward to this middleweight bout of Nick Maximoff, Andre Petrovsky. Is there anything else, any other fights, a fight or two that stands out to you, Garrett, that you feel like is either a solid bet where you can make some some money on a, on a favorite? Or is there a dog that, that stands out to you that you feel like uh, could spring an upset here? Um, I, I kind of like Frank Camacho. I know he's coming off two two losses, back to back losses, but he's got so much more experience than his counterpart in Ma- Manuel Torres. Uh, Torres really hasn't fought, you know, really good competition at all outside of the UFC. This is a contender series fighter. I love to fade contender series debut fighters, just like I did last week. Um, you know, so and I was able to get Camacho plus one thirty early in the week. Now he's all the way down to plus one hundred six, plus one hundred five, even minus one hundred five in, in some places. So you know, if you still got plus money on Camacho, I think he could get it done. I think he's tough enough to hang in there on the feet. And I mean, the man's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. So if he does get taken down, I think he, he'll be perfectly fine there as well. I think that's a, a pretty decent uh, dog play on this card. Okay. Anything else? Another fight that sticks out to you that you want to touch upon? Or does that pretty much cover it for this uh, upcoming fight night? I think the last one would probably be, I, I really do like Werner Jane Jadoba over Angela Hill. I got Jane Jadoba at minus 160, I think on Sunday. Uh, so now she's all the way up to minus 185, minus 190 at some places, minus 200. Um, I think she gets it done. I mean, we know what she does. She's a jiu-jitsu black belt. She's a world champion jiu-jitsu practitioner. She was the Invicta FC strawweight uh, title holder. Uh, and Angela Hill does one thing. She just, you know, she uses her movement to stay on the outside. But this is a small cage. She's going to get a hold of her. She's going to take her down. We know Hill's takedown defense is not good. Uh, Ashley Yoder took her down three times. Not good. Uh, you know, Tisha Torres took her down as well. I mean, she gets taken down at will. And even if this fight is close, we know that Angela Hill does not have the style that judges love. So I don't expect her to win uh, a close decision either. She's lost four out of her five split decisions in her career. So even if this goes to a split, I like our chances. All right. Well, another exciting UFC event this Saturday. And tomorrow night, we actually have uh, Bellator for you. So make sure you tune into that. A great weekend of fights. Garrett, always great talking to you, my friend. We'll do this again soon. I think we have a little break after this weekend from UFC fights, but we'll be back in action again soon. Make sure you like and subscribe to this YouTube channel, the Vegas Odds YouTube channel, and we'll be back with some more videos for you in the very near future.